Hey guys, this is Allison from Alleycat Creations. How are you? I'm holding on by threads. Um, I urge you all to go watch the powder movie review that I did. I re-listened to it because I never really re-listened to my videos at all, ever. And I did that one and it tugged a lot of strings. If you get anything from my work, a mic drop, an epiphany, a new author, a connect the dot, a new book to read, please consider supporting my work, supporting me. I'm in desperation. I did not get to the pawn shop today. I had people coming through and my realtor couldn't come to show, but there was other realtors there, so it was fine. Um, I am extremely overwhelmed. I am trying not to think negative thoughts and put the positive. I just saged my house. Um, you know, with all the people coming in and the energies and all my gems are away, I pack them up because I don't need pe people are, before I even begin this, I just really want to put this out there. My parents were looking to move a few years ago uh, before my father died. Well, that's more than a few years ago, 17 years on the 28th. And I never walked into someone's house and touched everything. Like I have to re-sanitize my toilets. Like people are fucking bizarre and look in the toilets. Who does that? Who, why? Why toilet seats are up? They 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 were they almost broke my attic, uh the the pull thingy. I I I don't know what possesses people to go looking in people and and moving things. You know, it's one thing to open to see cabinet size, but it's another to like actually like touch shit. Um, I had to sage my house. I'm like, what the fuck is these people doing? Like, you're crazy. I, I've i been on walk-alongs in a house just to see, and then I'm sitting there reimagining what the space should look like that we want. And let me tell you, I didn't touch anybody, disrespect anybody's space, didn't go into a bathroom and, and lift the toilet up. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, my toilets are clean. It, it's not about that. It's just the weirdest fucking shit in the world. I, I mean, like, my closets, like, thing, like, moved. Uh, why? Why? I, I, I don't know. But I got, I had to, like, just air everything out. I can't deal with the energy. Anywho. If you can help me out, that would be appreciated. My realtor is like, yeah, I could probably front the uh, cost of your bills. Well, that's great, but that's coming out again. Like I'm being like already ripped away from, you know, he has to get his cut of whatever I sell the house for. And that leaves me, you know, obviously with less plus taxes and everything. And then I have to get movers. And then I have to deal with another state and their, and their taxes and all that concept. By the time this is ended, I'm going to be depleted. Especially if I have to have my bills fronted. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want any. I. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting it out there. I need, I need prayer warriors. I need, I need people to come in to help me in this moment in time. It's appreciated. Um, you know, liking and sharing, subscribing absolutely helps me get my message and word out. 
I know a lot, a lot of my books aren't popular with the masses. I get that. Um, but if you know somebody that can help me in my situation, if you are in the New York City area and know of long distance movers that are not scabs, the key word there, professionals are going to move everything professionally and take care of my items professionally. That is what I'm looking for. And I will be willing to pay the price as long as it's not being taken advantage of. Um, like I, I need so much. And there's like, you know, he's like, oh, it's funny. You're sitting on all this money. I'm like, I am sitting with nothing in my bank account. I can't pay my bills. I'm sitting here having to give up what my parents worked hard for so that I can create a new life. And he scared me and he was like, oh, it might take 60 days. I don't have fucking 60 days. I I, I put the house up for a lot less to, you know, my I have, a, I have a townhouse. My townhouse is the bigger version. I have houses across the street that are going for more than what this house is. And I said to him, I get you need to do work, but that's by like, you know, obviously certain things are not by choice, but other things are. And that should not be in any way, shape, or form coming out of my pocket. Um, I upgraded a lot of stuff. It might not be visually a pleasant to see, but I did it. And if they want to change it, that's on them, not on me. So I'm like, you're selling my house to a, a price lower than what the house is across the street that are just selling as is. So we need to get people in. And we need to get that that price a little higher. And 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 cash buying, if they want to go lower than and then what I'm asking, I'm I'm not accepting it. I put my foot down. I'm like, no, no, I'm just not giving something away. And as desperate, and I might lose the internet, I might lose my phone, I might lose the capability, but I don't at this point give two flying fucks. I'm done. Anywho, I just want to get that out of the way. Um, I know a lot of people are hurting right now. I know a lot of people are in very similar situations. Um, so it's nothing that a lot of us aren't accustomed to hearing at this point in time. It's just very frustrating on my end. Um, you know, I'm seeing abundance being given from a lot of other people. And, you know, sometimes it's it's a little frustrating. But we have to keep in mind the Amish mindset. We have to keep in mind that we all need to do our part each and every day to help somebody. And I'm just asking everybody if they could do some kind of prayer for me. Um, I'm trying to do the best that I can to keep my vibrations high. I am trying my hardest to keep my cats calm and cool and collected. They're going, they're traumatized by beyond belief. Um, you know, I'm just doing the best that I can with what I have, which isn't much, but I'm pushing along each and every day and waking up and thanking the universe that I'm here. So that's for now. <laughs> the Secret Doctrine by Lavansky. I am doably sorry that I haven't gotten to this book. Um, those of you who are listening to this, I do apologize. It's been a nightmare. My life has been an utter freaking nightmare uh, the last two months. And really this whole July, end of July, August has been a nightmare. Um, you know, when you can't afford boxes and you need to like pack everything up uh, to make things a little easier and quicker in transition. And and everything is still very unknown. I don't know what's going on. I, I I'm asking for miracles, and I'm just hoping that the universe is doing something for me. Um, so I do apologize for anybody that is following this book. I'm going to read half of stanza five. And I do have a kitty cat in my way. Um, she needs some cuddles. She needs mommy time. But mommy needs to put some stuff out because I need to get this out. So just in case I am off grid, 
you guys have something to listen to while I, you know, figure out life. So hopefully she doesn't raise her butt in my face. Stanza five, the primordial seven, the first seven breaths of the dragon of wisdom produce in their turn from their holy circumgyrating breaths, the fiery whirlwind commentary. This is perhaps the most difficult of all the stanzas to explain. Its language is comprehensible only to him who is thoroughly versed in Eastern allegory and its purposely obscure phraseology. The question will surely be asked, do the occultists believe in all these builders, Lipka and Sons of Light as entities, or are they merely imaginaries? To this, the answer is given as plainly, quote, after due allowance for the imaginary of personified powers, we must admit the existence of these entities if we would not reject the existence of spiritual humanity within physical mankind. For the hosts of these sons of light and man-born sons of the first manifested ray of the unknown all are the very root of spiritual man, End quote. Unless we want to believe the unphilosophical dogma of specially created soul for every human birth, a fresh supply of these pouring in daily since Adam, we have to omit the occult teachings. This will be explained in its place. Let us now see what may be the occult meaning of this stanza. The doctrine teaches that in order to become a divine, fully conscious God, I, even the highest, the spiritual primeval intelligences, must first must pass through the human stage. And when we say human, this does not apply merely to our terrestrial humanity, but to the mortals that inhabit any world to those intelligences, intelligences that have reached the appropriate equilibrium between matter and spirit, as we have now since the middle point of the fourth root race of the fourth round was passed. Each entity must have won for itself the right of becoming divine through self-experience. Hegel, the great German thinker, must have known or sensed intuitively that truth when saying, as he did, that the unconscious evolved the universe only in the hope of obtaining clear self-consciousness, of becoming, in other words, man, for this is also the secret meaning of the usual Quranic phase about Brahma, being constantly moved by the desire to create. This explains also the hidden Kabbalistic meaning of the saying, the breath becomes a stone, the stone a plant, the plant an animal, the animal a man, the man a spirit, and the spirit a god. The man-born sons, the rishis, the builders, were all men of whatever forms and shapes in other worlds and the preceding manavantras. Pause. <laughs> spirit sinks. Spirit is sinking. Yesterday, I did this very profound video on Powder, the movie, and I spoke about our evolution through the densities. That we were once the fire, the air, the water. Then we moved into vegetation and then, you know, the bug life and then the animal life. And then we became human. Um... Very interesting that this sinks. Very interesting. I spoke about that. Because there's a lot of people out there who are, um, you know, no judgment on anybody. When we speak about with the food situation and not people don't eat it, sentient beings, well, 
everything is sentient. Everything encompasses an essence. So you're no better for eating the vegetable that is providing you nourishment than the animal that's providing you the same type of nourishment. It's different chemical needs that people have. Um, those souls come in knowing what they are getting themselves into. And I explained, um, Brian Scott of the Reality Revolution also goes into a quo reading about that that the animals already know going in what their purpose is and that they're moving on up. <laughs> so don't, don't think that the animals that, you know, un unfortunately are inhumanely slaughtered for our food substances, um, they're aware of what's going on. And those who choose the zoo life and the wildlife, they're all at the end of the day going to die. The same thing with the vegetation. If if it's not plucked and eaten, it's going to rot and be revisited into the earth. The same with us. We die and we don't, you know, cremate ourselves. We are going to be eaten by the buggies. So, I mean, it's a cycle of life and we all have to start like understanding that the whole thing is everything is sentient and everything is a part of God and we are God's parts of God and fractals of that. So, sorry, off on my tangent, back to the book. <laughs> the subject being so very mystical is therefore the most difficult to explain in all details and bearings since the whole mystery of evolutionary creation is contained in it. A sentence or two, in it vividly recalls to mind similar ones in the Kabbalah and the phraseology of the king psalmist, as both when speaking of God, show him making the wind his messenger and his messengers, sorry, ministers of flaming fire. But in the esoteric doctrine, it is used figuratively, the fiery wind is the incandescent cosmic dust, which only follows magnetically as the iron fillings follow the magnetic, the directing thought of the creative forces. Yet this cosmic dust is something more, for every atom in the universe has the potentiality of self-consciousness in it. And is like the monads of Leibniz, a universe in itself and for itself. It is an atom and an angel. In this connection, it should be noted that one of the luminaries of the modern evolutionist school, Mr. A. R. Wallace, when discussing the inadequacy of natural selection as the sole factor in the development of physical man, practically concedes the whole point here discussed. He holds that the evolution of man was directed and furthered by superior intelligences, whose agency is a necessary factor in the scheme of nature. But once the operation of these intelligences is emitted in one place, it is only a logical deduction to extend it still further. No hard and fast line can be drawn. Interesting. They make of him the messenger of their will. The Daizu becomes Fohat, the swift son of the divine sons, whose sons are that Lipka, run circular errands. He is the steed and the thought is the rider. He passes like lightning through the fiery clouds takes three and five and seven strides through the seven regions above and the seven below. He lifts his voice and calls the innumerable sparks and joins them together, the atoms. This shows the primeval seven using for their va vahan vehicle of the manifested subject, which becomes the symbol of the power directing it. Fohat called in consequence, the messenger of their will, the fiery world wind. Daizu becomes Fohat. The expression itself shows it. Daizu 
is the one real magical knowledge or occult wisdom, which dealing with external truths and primal causes becomes almost omnipotence when applied in the right direction. Its antithesis is daizu mi, that which deals with illusions and false appearances only, as in our esoteric modern science. In the case, Daizu is the expression of the collective wisdom of the Daihan Buddhas. As the reader is supposed to not be acquainted with the Daizen, Daian Buddhas, it is as well to say at once that according to the Orientalists, there are five Daians who are the celestial Buddhas of whom the, the human Buddhas are the manifestations in the world of form and matter. Esoterically, however, the Dhyan Buddhas are seven of whom five only have here to manifest. And two are to come in the sixth and seventh root races. They are, so to speak, the eternal prototypes of the Buddhas who appear on this earth, each of whom has his particular divine prototype. So for this instance, Atmit Baha, the Daihan Buddha of Gautama, Sakayuni, manifesting through him whenever this great soul incarnates on earth as he did in Taizan Ka Pa, as a synthesis of the seven Daihan Buddhas. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce the this name. It is really long and it's something that I'm not going to be able to project. So it was the first, this, this name that starts with an A, ends with an A, very long, um, was the first Buddha, the Logos. So Atamba Abba is the inner god of Guatama, who is China, is called Atima Buddha. They are, as Mr. Rias Davids correctly states, the glorious counterparts in the mystic world free from the debasing conditions of the material life of every earthly mortal Buddha, the liberated Manshi Buddhas appointed to govern the earth in this round. They are the Buddhas of contemplation and are all Anuputka, parentless, self-born of divine essence. The exoteric teachings which says that every Daihan Buddha has the faculty of creating from himself an equally celestial son, a Daihan Bud Buddhistava, who after the decree de deceased, deceased of the Manchi human Buddha, has to carry out the work of the latter, rests on the fact that owing to this highest intuition performed by one overshadowed by the spirit of Buddha who is credited by the Orientalists with having created the five Daihan Buddhas. A candidate becomes virtually a Bodhisattva created such for the higher initiator. Bohat being one of the most, if not the most important character in esoteric cosmogony should be minutely described as in the oldest Grecan cosmology Differing widely from the later mythology, Eros is the third person in the primeval trinity. Chaos. Eros answering to the Kabbalistic and Soph, for chaos is space, void, the boundless all. Shikna and the Ancient of Days of the Holy Ghost. So Fahat. Fohat is one thing in the yet unmanifested universe and another in the phenomenal and cosmic world. In the later, he is the occult electric vital power, which under the will of the creative logos unites and brings together all forms, giving them the first impulse from, be from which becomes in time law. But in the unmanifested universe, Fohat is no more than this, than Eros, is the later brilliant winged Cupid or love. Bohat has not to do with cosmos yet, 
since cosmos is not born and the gods still sleep in the bosom of the father mother. He is an abstract philosophical idea. He produces nothing yet by himself. He is simply the potential creative power in virtue of whose action, the nominum of all future phenomenon divides, so to speak. But to reunite in a mystic superstitious act emit the creativity, creative ray. When the divine sun breaks forth, then Fohat becomes the propelling force, the active power which causes the one to become two and three on the cosmic plane of manifestation. The triple one differentiates into the many and the Fohat is transformed into the force which brings together the elemental atoms and makes them aggregate and combine. We find an echo of this primeval teaching in early Greek mythology. Ebros and Nux, Nux are born out of chaos and under the action of Eros gives birth to their true and their turn to ether in Hirama, the light of the superior and the light of the inferior of terrestrial regions. Darkness generates light. See in the pro the pranas, brahmas, will or desire to create, and in the Phoenician cosmogony of San Sanchon, the doctrine that desire is the principle of creation. And again, guys, I am trying to pronounce these things, and it don't come out right, so I do apologize. I'm not trying to get frustrated. Bohat is clearly related to the one life. From the unknown one, the infinite totality, the manifested one, or the primordial man ventric deity emanates. And this is the universal mind, which separated from its fountain source is the demiurgos, or the creative logos, of the Western Kabbalists and the four-faced Brahma of the Hindu religion. In its totality, viewed from the standpoint of manifested divine thought, in the esoteric doctrine, it represents the host of the higher creative Diane Kohans. Simultaneously with the evolution of the universal mind, the concealed wisdom of Adi Buddha, the one supreme and eternal manifests itself as that first Buddha, that very long word name I cannot pronounce, or manifested is Vara, which is the which is the Osiris of the Egyptians, the Ahura Mazda of the Zaro Zaro Astrians, the human, the heavenly man of the Hermetic philosopher, the Logos of the Platonists, and the Atman of the Venantins Venantins. By the action of the manifested wisdom of Manhattan, represented by the innumerable centers of spiritual energy in the cosmos, the reflection of the universal mind, which is cosmic ideation, and the intellectual force accompanying such ideation becomes objectively the Fohat of the Buddhist esoteric philosopher. Fohat, running along the seven principles of Akasha, acts upon manifested substance, or the one element, as declared above and by differentiating it into various centers of energy, sets in the motion the law of cosmic evolution, which in obedience to the ideation of the universal mind brings the existence of the various states of being, the manifested solar system. The solar system brought into existence by the agencies consists of seven principles like everything else within these centers. Such is the teachings of the trans Himalayan esotericism. Every philosophy, however, has its own way of dividing these principles. Bohat then is the personified electric vital power, the transcendental binding unity of all cosmic energies on the unseen as on the manifested planes, the action of which resembles on an immense scale that of a living force created by will in this phenomena where the seemingly subjective acts on the seemingly objective and propels it to action 
Pohat is not only the living symbol and container of that force, but is looked upon by the occultists of and as entity, the force forces he acts upon being cosmic human and terrestrial and exercising their influences on all those planes respectively. On the earthly plane, his influence is felt in the magnetic and active force generated by the strong desire of the magnetizer. On the cosmic, it is present in the constructive power that carries out in the formation of things from the planetary system down to the glow worm and simple daisy, the plan in the mind of the nature or the divine thought with regard to the development and growth of this special thing. He is metaphysically the objectivized thought of the gods, the word made flesh on a lower scale and the messenger of cosmic and human ideations, the active force in universal life. In his secondary aspect, Pohat is the solar energy, the electric vital fluid, and the preserving fourth principle, the animal soul of nature. So to say, or electrically in India, Pohat is connected with Vishnu and Sira in the early character of the first god, for Vishnu is not a high god in the Rig Veda. The name Vishnu is from the root Vish, to pervade and Fohat called the pervader, the manufacturer, because he shapes the atoms from crude material. In the sacred texts of the Rig Veda, Vishnu also is manifestation of the solar energy and is described as striding through the seven regions of the universe in three steps, the Vedic God having little in common with the Vishnu of later times. Therefore, the two are identical in this particular feature, and one is the copy of the other. The three and seven strides refer to the seven spheres inhabited by man of the esoteric doctrine, as well as the seven regions of the earth, notwithstanding the frequent objections made by would-be orientals. The seven worlds, or spheres, of our planetary chain are distinctly referred to in the exoteric Hindu scriptures, but how strangely all these numbers are connected with the numbers in other cosmogenies and with their symbols can be seen from comparison and parallelisms made by students of all religions. The three strides of Vishnu through the seven regions of the universe of the Rig Veda have been variously explained by the commentators as meaning fire, lightning, and the sun cosmically, and as having been taken in the earth, the atmosphere, and the sky, also as the three steps of the dwarf Vishnu's incarnation, through more philosophically and in the astronomical sense, very correctly, they are explained by Arunvaba as being the various positions of the sun, rising, noon, and setting. Esoteric philosophy alone explains it clearly, and the Zohar laid it down very philosophically and comprehensively. It is said and plainly demonstrated therein that in the beginning of Elohim, Elim, were called echoed. One, or the deity, is one in many, a very simple idea in a pantheism, in pantheistic conception in the philosophic sense, of course. Then came the change, Jehovah is Elohim, thus unifying the multiplicity and taking the first step towards monotheism. Now to the query, how is Jehovah Elohim? The answer is by three steps from below. The meaning is plain. They are all symbols in emblematic neutrality and cor correlatively, of spirit, soul, and body, man, of the circle transformed into spirit, the soul of the world, and its body or earth stepping out of the circle of infinity, that no man comprehendeth, uh, I and so, the Kabbalistic synonym, synonym for Parabrahma, for the Zirana, or queen of the Mazadans, or for any unknowable becomes one, the Akkad, the Ek, 
the Anu, then he or it transformed by evolution into the one in many, the Daihan Buddhas or the Elohim, or again, the Amshepet. Amshepet, can't get that word out. His third step being taken into generation of the flesh or man, and from man or Jehovah, male, female, the inner divine entity becomes on metaphysical plane and once more the Elohim. Very interesting. The Kabbalistic idea is identical with the esotericism of archaic period. The esoteric esotericism is the common property of all and belongs neither to the Aryan fifth race nor to any of its numerous sub races. It cannot be claimed by the Turanians or so called the Egyptians, Chinese, Chaldeans, nor any of the seven divisions of the fifth root race, but really belongs to the third and fourth root race, whose descendants we find in the seed of the fifth, the earliest Aryans. The circle was with every nation the symbol of the unknown, the boundless space, the abstract garb of an ever present abstraction the incognizable deity. It represents limitless time in eternity. The zero Anian Akern Karen is also the boundless circle of the unknown time. From the circle issues the radiant light, the universal sun or Osmond. And the later is identical with Kronos in his alien form that of the circle for the circle is sar and sorrows or cycle and was the babylonian god whose circular horizon was the visible symbol of the invisible while the sun was the one circle from which proceeded the cosmic orbs of which he was considered the leader zero anna is the chakra or circle of Vishnu, the mysterious emblem, which is according to the definition of a mystic, a curve of such a nature that as to say any, the least possible part thereof, if the curve be protracted either way, it will proceed and finally re-enter upon itself and form one of the same curve or that which we call the circle. No better definition of deity, which having its circum circumference everywhere, the boundless, has therefore its central point also everywhere. In other words, it is every point of the universe. The invisible deity is thus also the Diane Kohans, or the Rishis, the primitive seven, and the nine, without ten, including their symbolical unit from which it steps into man. Returning to the commentary of stanza four, the reader will understand why, while the trans Himalayan chakra has inscribed within it a triangle, square, and pentagram. Triangle first. Sorry, guys, this is really tiny. Uh, triangle, first line, cube, second line, and pentacle with a dot in the center, thus pentacle and some other variations the Kabbalistic circle of the Elohim reveals when the letters of the word, and they don't, Ahem or Elohim are numerically read the famous numerals 13,514 or by anagram 31,415. The astronomical pi number or the hidden meaning of the Dihan Buddhas or the Gerbers, the Gerberim, the Kabari, and the Elohim are signifying great men, titans, heavenly men on earth, the giants. Interesting. Because they did exist.
The seven was a sacred number with every nation, but none applied it to more physiologically materialistic uses than the Hebrews. With these, it was preeminently and generative number and nine, the male causative one, forming as shown by the Kabbalists, the oats, the tree of the Garden of Eden, the double hermaphrodite rod of the fourth race, whereas the Hindus and Aryans generally, the significance was manifold and related almost entirely to purely metaphysical and astronomical troops. The, their rishis and gods, their demons and heroes have historical and etherical meanings, and the Aryans never made their religion rest solely on physiological symbols as the old Hebrews have done. This is found in the esoteric Hindu scriptures that these accounts are blind and shown by their contradicting each other, a different construction being found in almost every prana and epic poem. Read esoterically, they will all yield the same meaning. Thus one account enumerates seven worlds exclusive of neither worlds. Also seven in number, these 14 upper and neither worlds have nothing to do with the classification of the cemetery chain and belong to the purely etherical invisible worlds. These will be noticed elsewhere. Suffice for the present to show that they are purposely referred to as though they belong to the chain. Another enumeration calls the seven worlds, sky, earth, heaven, middle region, place of birth, mansion of the blessed, the least, and abode of truth, placing the sons of Brahma in the sixth division and start stating the fifth as Jana Loka to be that where animals destroyed in the general conflagration are born again. Some real esoteric teachings is given in the symbolism he who is prepared for it will understand the hidden meeting. Wow. We're continuing stanza five. He is their guiding spirit and leader. When he commences wo work, he separates the sparks of the lower kingdom that float and thrill with joy in their radiant dwellings and forms therewith the germs of wheels. He places them in their six directions of space and one in the middle, the central wheel. The wheels, as already explained, are the centers of force around which primordial cosmic matter expands and passes through all the six stages of constellation. Consolidation, see, I got it out, becomes spheroidal and ends being transformed into globes or spheres. It is one of the fundamental dogmas of esoteric cosmogony that during the Kaplas, Kappas, Kalpas, or aeons of life, motion which do during the periods of rest pulsates and thrills through every slumbering atom. I'm sorry, guys, it was really annoying. Cars passing by. Assumes an ever growing tendency from the first awakening of cosmos to a new day to circular movement, the deity becomes a whirlwind. They are also called rot, rot, the moving wheels of the celestial orbs participating in the world's creation when the meeting refers to the animating principle of the stars and planets. For in the Kabbalah, they all represented by the Orphim, the angels of the spheres and stars at which they are informing souls. This law of vertical movement is primordial matter is one of the oldest conceptions of Greek philosophy. 
whose first historical sages were nearly all initiates of the mysteries. The Greeks had it from the Egyptians and the later the Chaldeans, who had been pupils of Brahmins of the esoteric school. Lysippus and Democrius of Adera, the pupil of the Magi, taught that this gyratory movement of the atoms and spheres existed from eternity. Hyctius, Heraclitus, Ephesius, Pythagoras, and all his pupils taught that rotation of the earth and the Arabhata of India, Aristocrus, Silicrius, and Archimedes calculated its revolution as scientifically as the astronomers do now, while the theory of the elemental vortices was known as the Anaxoragus and maintained by him 300, sorry guys, I can't see, 500 years or nearly 2000 before it was taken up by Galileo, Descartes, Swedenborg, and finally the slight modifications by Sir W. Thompson. All such knowledge, if just be only done to it, is an echo of the archaic doctrine an attempt to explain which is now being made how men of the last few centuries have come to the same ideas and conclusions that were taught as axiomatic truths in the secrecy of the atta dozens of millenniums ago is a question that they treated separately some were led to it by the natural progress in physical science and by independent observation, others such as Copernicus, Swedenborg, and a few more, that their great learning notwithstanding owed their knowledge far more to intuitive than to acquired ideas developed in the usual ways by the course of study. By the six directions of space is there meant the double triangle the junction of blending together of the pure spirit and matter of Arupa and the Rupa, of which the triangles are a symbol. The double triangle is a sign of Vishnu, as it is Solomon's seal and the Sari Antara of the Brahmins. Fohat trace spiral lines to unite the sixth to the seventh the crown, an army of the sons of light, stands at each angle, and the lipka in the middle of, of in the middle wheel. They say this is good. The first divine world is ready, the first, the second, then the divine arupa. The tracing of spiral lines refers to the evolution of man's as well as nature's principles, an evolution which takes place gradually, as will be seen in book two on the origin of human races, as does everything else in nature, the sixth principle in man, Bodhi, Bodhi, the divine soul, though a mere breath in our conceptions is still something material when compared with divine spirit, Atma, of which it is carrier or vehicle. Bohat, in his capacity of divine love, Eros, the electric power of affinity and sympathy, is shown allegorically as trying to bring the pure spirit, the ray inseparable from the one absolute into union with the soul, the two constituting in man the monad, and the nature, the first link between the ever unconditioned and manifested. The first is now the second world of the Lipkas, the reference to the same. The army at each angle is the host of angelic beings appointed to guide and watch over each respective region from the beginning to the end of Mahavatra. They are the mystic watchers of the Christian Kabbalists and the alchemists and relate symbolically 
as well as cosmo cosmonomically to the numerical system of the universe. The numbers with which the celestial beings are connected are extremely difficult to explain as each number refers to several groups of distinct ideas according to the particular group of angels, which is intended to represent. Herein lies the nudas to in the study of symbology with which unable to unite by distangling it, so many scholars have preferred dealing as Alexander dealt with the Gordian knot. Hence, erroneous conceptions and teachings as a direct result. The first is the second because the first cannot really be numbered or regarded as the first, as that is the realm of noumena in its primary manifestation, the threshold to the world of truth or set through the direct energy that radiates from the one reality, the nameless deity reaches us. Here again, the untranslatable term sat, Venus, is likely to lead into the erroneous conception since that which is manifested cannot be sat, but is something phenomenal, not everlasting, nor in truth ever septerial. It is covial and coexistent with the one life secondless but as a manifestation it is still a maya like the rest this world of truth can be described only in the words of the commentary as a bright star dropped from the heart of eternity the beacon of hope on whose seven rays being the seven worlds of being truly so since those are the seven lights whose reflections are the human immortal monads the atma or the irradiating spirit of every creature of human, human family. First, the sedentary light, then the divine world, the countless lights lit at the primeval light, the Buddhas, I keep saying that wrong, Buddhas, or formless divine souls of the last Arupa, formless world, the sum total in the mysterious language of the old stanzas. In the catechism the master is made to ask the pupil lift thy head olano dost thou see one or countless lights above thee burning in the dark midnight sky i sense one flame o Gar gorodiva i see countless undetached sparks shining in it thou sayest well and now look around and into thyself, that light which burns inside thee, dost thou feel it different in any wise from the light that shines in thy brother men? It is in no way different, though the prisoner is held in bondage by karma, and though it out garments delude the ignorant into saying, thy soul and my soul. The radical unity of the ultimate essence of each constitute part of the compounds in nature from star to mineral atom from the highest dihen kohen to the smallest in sephira in the fullest exception of the term and whether applied to the spiritual intellectual or physical world this is the one fundamental law in occult science the deity is boundless and infinite expansion says the occult axiom and hence as remarked the name of brahman Brahma. There is a deep philosophy underlying the earliest worship in the world, that of the sun, of the fire. Of all the elements known to physical science, fire is the one that has ever eluded definite analysis. It is confident, confidently asserted that air is the mixture containing the gases oxygen and nitrogen. We view the universe and earth as matter composed of definite chemical molecules. We speak of the primitive ten earths, endowing each with a Greek or Latin name. We say the water is chemically a compound of oxygen and hydrogen, but what is fire? It is the effect of combustion, we are gravely answered. It is here heat and light, 
motion, and correlation of physical and chemical forces in general. And this scientific definition of philo philosophically supplemented by the theological one in Webster's Dictionary, which explains fire as the instrument of punishment or the punishment of the impiety impenitent in other state in another state impenitent the state by the by being supposed to be spiritual but alas the presence of fire would seem to be convincing proof of the material nature yet speaking of the illusion of regarding phenomena as simple because they are familiar professor brian says very familiar facts seem to stand in no need of explanation themselves and to be the means of explain explaining whatever can be assimilated to them. Thus the bolting, sorry guys, I can't see. Thus the boiling and evaporation of a liquid is supposed to be a very simple phenomenon requiring no explanation and satisfactory explanation of rarer phenomena. That water should dry up is to the uninstructed mind, a thing wholly intangible. Whereas to the man acquainted with physical science, the liquid state is anomalous, anomalous and inexplicable. The light of fire by a flame is a great scientific difficulty, yet people think. What says the esoteric teachings with regard to fire? Fire, it says, is the most perfect and unadulterated reflection in heaven as on earth of the one flame. It is the life and death, the origin, the end of every material thing. It is divine substance. This not only the fire worshiper, the Parsi, but even the wandering savage tribes of America, which proclaim themselves born of fire, show more science in their creeds and truths in their superstitions than all the speculations of modern physics and, lecture and learning. The Christian who says God is living fire and speaks of the Pentecostal tongues of fire and of the burning bush of Moses is as much a fire worshiper as any other, uh, any other heathen. The Rosicrucians, among all the mystics and Kabbalists, were those who defined fire in the right and most correct way. Procure a sexpenny lamp between lamp keep it only supplied with oil and you'll be able to light its flame the lamps candles and fires of the whole globe without diminishing the flame if the deity and radical one is eternal and infinite substance the lord thy god is a consuming fire and never consumed then it does not seem reasonable that the occult teaching should be held in be held as unphilosophical when it says thus were the arupa and rupa worlds formed from the one light seven lights from each of the seven seven times seven so i'm gonna leave it there um very interesting um again i do apologize for my my misspeakings my can't pronounce and now my eyes are going a little blurry um i have i'm not used to reading off the screen i usually have the books um i haven't done a screen reading in a while so i do apologize guys but my eyes are getting blurry um again if you can help me out that would be a big blessing and that could be you know amish mindset a like a share a subscribe um putting forth into a chain of people that could possibly help me um, would be very appreciated. Um, please drop in the comments. I'm also trying to help somebody that's in Wisconsin. If you are somebody that you know lives in Wisconsin, I have a person that is in need of a lot of help. And, you know, sometimes help doesn't necessarily need to be financial. It just needs to be food. It could be clothes. It could be whatever abundance you hold, energy, prayers anything. So please keep that in mind. I'm going to spread the Samish mindset and hope it takes off. Anywho, sending each and every one of you love and light. Thank you for being patient with me and understanding my circumstances are not easy. And 
I'm going to try to do at least one or two readings a day. If not, get a video in. I'm trying. I'm pushing my butt. Please be safe. Please enjoy your weekend. We're almost there. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.